Let's talk about our template on ancillary documents. It's titled Divorce Decree Ancillary Documents. So as you know, when these people get divorced, they always have some extra documents that we have to do to effectuate their agreement. And there's common ones that we have to do and there's less common ones. So we've built a template to help remind you of some of the ancillary documents and to help you to assign them to yourself or someone else in the office and make sure they get done. So, one that you might not always think about but is helpful is there is an assignment of utility deposits. So let's say that the house, the marital home, that the wife was the one who set up all that. So when they moved into that house 15 years ago, she set up the gas and everything related to that house. Well, now they're divorcing and it turns out husband's going to get the house. Well, certainly we don't want a situation where perhaps accidentally or perhaps in anger, the wife cancels all the utilities and gets the utility deposit back and now he has his gas turned off and everything else he has to get it all turned back on. That is probably not best. So we can have a form where we assign the utility deposits to the husband and we rename them and put all those utilities into the husband's name in that instance. Next one, special warranty deed. Of course, this is a common one because we have a house in many cases and unless they're selling the house, we're probably going to have to um, transfer the house from one party to the other or from both parties to one and you will need a legal description from the existing deed on the house to draft your special warranty deed. Also, you may consider if you need a deed of trust to secure assumption. So if the debt on the house is in both parties names or in the party's name that is not getting the house they need a deed of trust to secure assumption to to protect their credit until a refinance is done if there's going to be a refinance of course that's the preferred solution is for someone to refinance the property but sometimes they don't qualify and they can't so if you cannot do a refinance or that's not an option in your case you certainly want a deed of trust to secure assumption or maybe they're going to refinance, but not for a year. So you need the deed of trust to, to secure assumption in the meantime. And that will help protect the credit, at least, of the person who is no longer going to be living in the house and doesn't really want to pay that debt. <laughs> cars. So let's talk about cars. You'd think this would be simple, but it is not quite that simple. If there is no loan on the car and it is not titled in the person's name that is being awarded the car, you just sign the title over. If there is a loan on the car, then you can't sign the title over because you don't have it, right? The finance company has it. So instead, we do a power of attorney, and that allows the person, when and if they pay off the car, they can then use the power of attorney to retitle it in their own name, and they don't have to go back to their ex to get that done. So that's the point of the power of attorney. You don't need the power of attorney if there's no debt on the car because you already have the title you can just sign the title over. If the title is signed, they need to transfer title within 20 days and a lot of people would not be aware of this. If they don't, they'll start incurring a fee. So you want to inform your client, hey, if you're the one getting the title, go get it titled in your own name. And it's like $5 a month or something every month that they delay in doing this. So you definitely want to inform them to do this. Another popular item is a quadro. And if we have a qualified plan and typical ones or 401ks or pension plans, we can't divide them with just the decree. We need to have a qualified domestic relations order, commonly called a quadro, in order to divide those. And many people hire this out and have a specialist hire drafted and the specialists usually charge from three to five hundred dollars um, per quadro and if you need more than one they might give you a little break on the second or third one. Um, but one thing to know is when you do a quadro there may be standard forms, standard quadros, plan documents that you need from the plan administrator of the employers, uh, the spouse who has the quadro, their employer. So you should ask for that because if you hire it out or you do it yourself, you're going to need that. And when they have a standardized form, that's a good starting point. And there just may be things that the specialist 
um, wants to change a little bit from that. Okay, wage withholding orders. So we have a whole separate template on wage withholding orders, but this is a reminder that that's an ancillary document you're going to need if child support has been ordered. And the courts require it even if you're not going to effectuate it this time. So you're not going to send it to the employer yet. You're going to suspend wage withholding. You can do that by agreement, but the court still requires a wage withholding order to be in the file. So be aware of that. And then you may need security documents if there's going to be a payout over time. So examples of that is maybe there's a business and mainly their assets are the business and the house and the business is worth a lot more than the house and the business person's going to maintain the business and keep working in the business. The only alternative or one of the alternatives that they may select is to buy the other person out with a payment over time. So it would look like an alimony payment really, monthly payment to the other person to buy them out of the business. Well, if I'm the person receiving that payment, I would sure like some um, security to know I'm really going to get those payments. And if they own real estate or if the business owns something that could be used to secure those payments, you would want to do that. So this is just a reminder to secure any kind of payout over time if you can, if there's some uh, agreement to do that or some asset available to secure it. And it, it might be a promissory, you might have a promissory note, you might have liens, you might have a UCC filing. So there's different types of security documents uh, depending on whatever you're using to secure it. But that's something to be reminded of and to think about if you do have a payout over time to just ensure that your client's going to get that money. So these are some of the ancillary documents that we've encountered. You can add to this template as you encounter other ancillary documents in your cases.